Now this is an IGCSE and GCSE physics video and really I just want to take you through some generic calculations to help you work out the best way of approaching the calculations because as we know in physics it's so important that you get the maths element right because so much of the paper is maths based. So here's just a kind of random mix of questions. So question one, the diagram shows an electric motor. The electric motor needs a direct current. Explain what is meant by the term direct current. You have to learn your key definitions. Remember that my perfect answer revision guides are full of those key definitions. So direct current, you simply write that the current flows in one direction only. And it is so important that you state the word only. Explain the purpose of the brushes and the commutator in a direct current motor. Again, something to learn off by heart. First of all, describe the brushes role and then describe the role of the commutator. So brushes provide a connection to the coil. Then you're going to get the second and third mark for describing the role of the commutator. The commutator reverses the current in the coil every half turn. And really that ensures that the coil continuously rotates. The motor turns clockwise when the direction of the current goes from positive to negative. State what happens to the motor when both the magnetic field and current are reversed. Now, the fact that you're doing it to both the magnetic field and the current means that effectively they're going to cancel out each other's effect. So actually you're going to find that the motor continues to turn clockwise. If the question had simply been about the magnetic field reversing, then the motor would have turned anticlockwise. If the question had been about the current being reversed, then the motor would have turned anticlockwise. But they're both cancelling out each other's effect, so that's why our motor continues to turn clockwise. And really, remember, this is all to do with Fleming's left-hand rule. So you must watch my video on electromagnetism if you're not totally sure what's going on here. Okay, so now we're getting into the maths part of this. The photograph shows a machine at a coal mine. The machine lifts up containers of coal from the mine and lowers empty containers down. The machine uses an electric motor connected to a 600 volt direct current supply. The maximum current in the motor is 4000 amps. State the equation linking power, current and voltage. And so I'm just going to make some notes to myself. We know that we've got a voltage of 600 volts. We know that we've got a current of 4000 amps. Now we're being asked to state the equation linking power, current and voltage. So you need this formula triangle, which is PIV. Remember, I stands for current. So you cover whatever it is you're after. So I'm after power and I can therefore see that it's current times voltage. You can either write it out in words or in the accepted format, which I'm displaying here. Do not write current as C. You have to write it as I because I stands for intensity of current. Calculate the maximum power available from the motor. So again, I'm writing out the equation I'm using. Keep everything nicely lined up to make whoever's marking its life easier. So it's 4,000 times the voltage, which is 600. So here's your final answer, 2,400,000. And that's gonna be in watts. Check your units. You're being asked for your units in terms of megawatts. So you need to divide your answer by a million to convert that appropriately to get a value which is 2.4 megawatts. The machine lifts a load weighing 400,000 newtons through 190 meters. State the relationship between work done, force and distance moved. Work done is force times distance. Don't worry if you do what I do, which is sometimes write it out in full, sometimes write it out in the accepted symbols. Just notice that that's your force here and that's your distance. So when you get to part two, calculate the work done on the load. I'm just writing out in shorthand because that's not what the question's about. The question's about the maths element. So I know that it's 400,000 times 190 to get this very large number here. which is 76 million. The unit of work done is the same as energy, it's joules, so we can just write that number down here again. The machine uses an average mean power of 1.9 megawatts to do 67 megajoules of work. Calculate the time needed to do this work. So we have a power value 
and we have an energy work done value. This is the formula triangle you're going to use this time. It's we play tennis is how I remember it. We're after time, so we need to do work done divided by power. Our work done, I've already circled, is 67 megajoules. Our power was 1.9 megawatts, and therefore our time is 35.263. Notice that because the units are both in terms of mega, they just cancel each other out, so we didn't need to write very long numbers here. So our final answer here is 35.3 seconds to three significant figures. State the effect of using a lower average power to do this work. So check your equation here. If we reduce the power, we know that the work done is the same. So how do we keep that number being the same if this number is less? Well, the time will increase. So just state here that the time taken is longer. A flying squirrel is an animal that can glide through the air. It spreads out its limbs to stretch a membrane that helps it to glide. The mass of the flying squirrel is 0 0.19 kilograms. It climbs 17 meters up a tree. State the equation linking gravitational potential energy, mass, g, and height. It's not really a formula triangle here. It's much better to just learn this off by heart. You simply multiply together all those values. Calculate the GPE gained by the squirrel during this climb. We know that its mass is 0 0.19. We know gravity on Earth is approximately 10. You need to learn that. Height is 17 meters. Pop that into your calculator and you get a value which is 32.3. State the amount of work done against the force of gravity by the squirrel during this time. Remember that work done and energy have the same unit, which is joules. It's only worth one mark, so the likelihood is that this value is going to be the same, and indeed it is. The flying squirrel glides from P to Q with a constant velocity of 13 metres per second. Add labelled arrows to the diagram to show the directions of the forces of weight and drag acting on the squirrel. Well, remember, weight always acts down. Drag acts against the motion, so it acts in this direction here. State the equation linking kinetic energy, mass and velocity. Again, not that useful to put it into a triangle. Kinetic energy is half mass times velocity squared. We're now being asked to calculate the kinetic energy of the squirrel as it glides. Don't forget to scroll all the way back up to make sure you get all the information you need. So the mass is 0 0.19 kilograms. The velocity of the squirrel we can see here is 13 meters per second. We need to square that. Pop that into your calculator and your final answer is 16.1. The velocity of the squirrel decreases to zero when it reaches the second tree because... Make sure you go through each of these options in turn and decide if they're suitable or not. A. An unbalanced force acts on the squirrel. Yes, that's true. B. No force acts on the squirrel. Well, that's not true. The GPE of the squirrel increases. Well, it's landed on the second tree, which is lower. So that would be that it has decreased. So that's why that's wrong. The kinetic energy of the squirrel increases. Well, it's stopped moving. So that's wrong, which is why A is the correct answer. A resistance band is a stretchy plastic band that is used when doing exercises. The diagram shows a student exercising his leg by stretching a resistance band fixed to a wall. The student moves his leg 34 centimeters sideways as shown. The average resistance force is 23 newtons. State the relationship between work done, force and distance moved. Work done is force times distance. Calculate the work done when the student moves his leg sideways once. Write out that equation. The force is 23 newtons. The distance moved is 34 centimetres. Be careful, our final unit is in joules, so we need to convert that into metres. So your final answer here is 7.82 joules. The student repeats the movement 15 times in one minute. Calculate the average power of the student during this exercise. So it's work done is power times time. We're after power, so we cover power. 
and we can see that power is work done divided by time. The work done we calculated before here is being 7.82. However, that was only during one exercise. The person does it 15 times in a minute, so we need to multiply that number by 15. And then the time, we know it's one minute, it needs to be in seconds, so that's 60 seconds. So be careful with your calculations here. So your final answer here is 1.955 which is 1.96 to three significant figures.